So Pete, I've got my stretch cluster. I followed all the best practices. I've got, you know, one millisecond of latency between the sites. I've got tons of hosts. You know, I've got my SPBM configured to, to replicate data. What do we need to do with it with DRS? DRS and vSAN are fully integrated with each other, but that doesn't mean that you, you don't need to, you know, set up a few manual steps along the way once you are configuring a, a vSAN stretch cluster. Uh, the first thing is, is that you'll want to establish what are known as host groups. Uh, this is going to help you define uh, the fault domains or the site boundaries of those respective hosts within each uh, site. The next step that you'll want to do is uh, create VM groups, and that's going to help you define which uh, side of the vSAN stretch cluster should those uh, VMs actually run in. Even though they're being fully replicated, you may have some uh, preferences in which site they, they should run in for you know, resource utilization, balancing, whatever. And then from there, you will set up some DRS rules that uh, help tell DRS that under normal operating conditions, some VMs should run on you know, site A and some VMs should run over in site B. But if there's a failure, that it will understand that, you know, hey, these, these VMs I can and should be running over in uh, the, the other fault domain. Uh, so that's basically how DRS and vSAN are fully integrated with each other. Uh, the nice news is in recent releases, we've been making some enhancements around that to where when that second site uh, comes back up from some sort of failure, or, you know, the ISL goes down, whatever, that we wait for the resynchronizations to uh, fully complete before we migrate any VMs back to the site that the VMs were assigned to. So this really helps from a data path perspective and an efficiency perspective. No, that's that's good to hear that you have that kind of power and control of placement. Um, and, and something always that everyone needs to think about when they're setting up a stretched cluster. Yeah, without a doubt. That's that's the main thing because we have had a few customers that have simply overlooked this and uh, and then of course, you know, they would raise a uh, some sort of a support issue. They weren't weren't quite sure what was going on and and they were simply omitting this. Now, we have some great uh, detailed instructions out on our uh, documentation uh, as well as the operations guidance out on uh, core.vmware.com that uh, gives you the exact steps for you to walk through this. Well, as we say here in Texas, good fences make good, you know, help make good neighbors and, and keep the goats, you know, where they're supposed to be. So uh, keep your VM or goats where they're supposed to be and use DRS.